check it out. Living in Florida is totally awesome. Whether it's splashing around with your buds, chilling at the beach, fishing, canoeing, water skiing, or just taking in the scenery. <laughs> this state is awesome. You're so random. Look, what makes our state so special is its water. Our rivers, lakes, and bays. Without water, Florida just wouldn't be Florida. And it's up to all of us to take care of our water because it's not just about the stuff we like now, it's about our future. Okay, pop quiz. Why should you care if Florida has clean water? Man, I hate pop quizzes. I give, why should we care? Here's why. Would you want to go swimming in this? Would you want to fish in it? Would you even want to look at it? Girl, that's nasty. Exactly. This is polluted water. It's what can happen when we don't take care of our lakes and rivers. In other words, no swimming in the lake, no fishing in the pond, no water skiing in the river. No to a lot of the things we like to do. And think about how much clean water contributes to the beauty of our state. Think about how many of us live, work, or play near a waterway at least some of the time. Nobody wants to live or play around this. And then there's Florida's economy. Okay, we get it. What's the state economy got to do with you? Here's the short version. Tourism is Florida's largest industry. Tourism helps pay for many of the things you like to do and have. People come here to enjoy water-related stuff. These visitors also help create jobs for your parents. And guess what? Those jobs help your parents buy you stuff. And what helps bring tourists to Florida? Clean water. In a few years, we're going to be out of school. We're going to want our economy to remain strong. We're going to want Florida to remain beautiful. But for those two things to happen, we have to have clean water. Which means we have to take some responsibility. Because, hey, it's our water too, and our future. So what's threatening our water? Well, that's changed over the years. During much of the last century, industrial waste and raw or barely treated sewage were the main causes of water pollution. Some waterways here in Florida became so polluted they could no longer support aquatic life. But by the 1970s, more people started paying attention to water pollution and speaking up about it. Laws were changed. So by the 1990s, most of the obvious pollution sources had been cleaned up. Today, the biggest source of water pollution for most areas of Florida is what's called stormwater runoff. Stormwater is simply rain after it hits the ground. Some of the rain soaks into the ground. The rest of it runs off, down the street, into the storm drain, or across the land towards a river, lake, or pond. Here's how this works. All land, here in Florida and everywhere else, is made up of watersheds. A watershed is the area over which water flows on its way to a common water body, like a lake, river, bay, or gulf. Our rivers, lakes, and streams all get their water from the watershed. But here's the problem. The runoff picks up all kinds of stuff along the way, stuff we don't want in our waterways. Some of this runoff flows directly to water bodies. Some enters storm drain systems which lead to nearby lakes, streams, and stormwater ponds. Most storm drain systems provide very little filtering of the water. All of that stuff, pollution, goes directly into the water. And here's another thing. Because the watersheds connect to each other, the pollution may travel 100 miles or more away from its source. Something dropped on the ground or thrown in the river here can end up polluting a bay all the way over here. What kind of pollutants are we talking about? Here's some examples. Oil, gasoline, and other fluids in bits of tire rubber and metal from cars, trucks, and school buses. Fertilizers and pesticides. Pet and other animal waste. Grass clippings and leaves. Construction debris. Industrial chemicals and paints. Everyday garbage and trash. All of that ends up in the rivers and lakes where we like to swim and fish. And here's another thing. The majority of people in Florida get their drinking water from groundwater, known as the aquifer. But even the aquifer can be affected by pollution because in many parts of Florida, surface water and groundwater are closely connected. What does pollution do to our water? It depends. Sometimes, it just makes the stream or pond smell bad or have a strange color. This may not have an immediate impact on the animals living in and around the water, but it can sure ruin our enjoyment of it. Other times, the impact can be much more severe. 
Chemicals can kill fish and threaten other animals that live near the water. Debris can change the water's natural flow and cause flooding. Debris can also damage the surrounding environment. And it just looks bad. Nutrients from fertilizers and animal waste can result in abnormal vegetation blooms, which can choke off the oxygen needed by the water's plants and animals. Bacteria can wash into swimming areas and create health hazards, sometimes forcing the areas to be closed. Trash like plastic bags, six-pack rings, bottles, and fishing line can suffocate or hurt fish, turtles, manatees, ducks, and birds. So, it's not just people who are affected by polluted water. Many of the animals that make Florida special also depend on healthy waterways. Those are just some of the effects pollution can have on our waterways. So now, here's a question. What can we do about it? It may seem at first like protecting our waterways is way too big of a job for any one person to take on. But here's the thing. It's not just one person. There are millions of us here in Florida. And if each of us does his or her part, the impact can be amazing. First off, don't throw trash in any water bodies or on the ground. Even trash left in what seems like the middle of nowhere can end up in a nearby river or stream. Put trash in proper containers. If you are out on the water, hang on to it until you reach land. Don't leave pet waste on the ground or in the gutter. And don't put it in the storm drain. Pick up after your pet and dispose of pet waste properly. Why? The average sized dog produces about a half a pound of poop per day. In the Tampa Bay area, for example, license records show there are about a half a million dogs. Together, they produce about 125 tons of poop each day. Since national surveys show about 40% of dog owners don't pick up after their pets, that means in the Tampa Bay area, about 50 tons of dog poop is left on the ground on a daily basis. Ew. Nobody wants that in our water. And remember, don't throw anything into the storm drain. Those are things we can do. There are other things we can get our families to do. Like asking your parents not to use fertilizers and pesticides within 10 feet of a water body. Try not to apply them right before a storm and make sure they don't spill over onto sidewalks or into the street. Ask your family, or whoever mows your lawn, not to sweep or blow grass clippings or yard waste into the street or storm drain. Wash the family car over a porous surface, like a yard, instead of over concrete or asphalt, where the dirty water might get into the storm drain. Or better still, use a commercial car wash where the water is recycled. Make sure your family properly disposes of hazardous household chemicals. Never pour those down sinks or into a toilet. If your home has a septic tank, grease, oil, and certain chemicals can harm or clog the system. These also can clog sewer lines. Remind your family never to put anything into a storm drain. And ask everyone in your home to reduce stress on the watershed by saving water. Turn off hoses when not in use. Don't leave the water running when you brush your teeth. And don't let the sprinkler system run when it's raining. If you're a member of a school club or belong to an organization like the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or a church group, there are things you can do in your neighborhood or community, like picking up trash along a street. Some groups even adopt a stretch of road or waterway and periodically pick up litter or put beneficial plants in the water that help filter out pollution. You and your friends can plant a buffer between yards and adjacent water bodies. These will help keep lawn chemicals from washing into the water. Your group could sponsor a clean water awareness program. By each of us doing a little and getting our families and our friends and our schoolmates to pitch in, we can make a huge difference. Not only for today, but also for tomorrow. Most of the time, people who are polluting our waterways don't realize what they're doing, or they don't understand how their actions impact the environment. But there are times when the actions are deliberate, such as dumping paint, other chemicals, or anything else into a lake or pond or into a storm drain. This is called an illicit discharge, and it's illegal. Here are some other examples. A restaurant hosing down greasy mats into a parking lot storm drain. Leaky storage drums or dumpsters placed near a ditch or pond. A construction site rinsing a concrete mixer or other machine into a storm drain. An illicit discharge is serious stuff. Fines can range up to $10,000 a day. Chances are, you'll never see someone deliberately polluting the water. But what if you do? Tell your parents, or tell a teacher, or if you see a police officer or a firefighter, tell them immediately. Don't do anything else. It might not be safe. 
what you're more likely to find is evidence of a possible illicit discharge, like dead grass or other vegetation, along a ditch or next to a pond. This could be the result of a legal herbicide application, or it could be caused by pollutants. You might notice an unusual smell, perhaps a chemical smell. You might see dead fish or other dead animals, like frogs or turtles, sometimes even birds. If you notice any of these things, don't try to collect any water samples. Don't touch any dead plants or animals. If there has been an illicit discharge, dangerous chemicals might still be present. Report what you found immediately, again, to your parents, a teacher, or some other authority figure. There's no way in the amount of time we have for this video that we can tell you everything you can do to help protect Florida's waterways. So if you'd like more information, here's where you can get it. Call them or visit their website. And we'd like you to think about this. No matter where you live in Florida, your local waterways are important, incredibly important, for now and for the future, your future. It's not just the government's responsibility, or your parents, or any particular group or organization. It's everyone's responsibility, yours and ours. Because like we've been saying, hey, it's our water too.